and welcome back to the Bunley Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name is Nicole Reen, and today we are here for DD Stitch Fest and an advent opening from Silk for You. We're up to day three for that, and so um, we're also going to be doing some more stitching on Holiday Quaker by Leela Studio. So let's get started. Okay, so we are back here for day 16 of the Stitch Mess and day 3 of the Advent Calendar. I have my cup of tea. I hope everybody's morning is going well. I'm going to need lots of tea today. Um, no, I also need lots of coffee today. The next door neighbour's dog. I don't know. Something was wrong with it last night and it barked all night. So anyway broke me up a few times so I've had a lot of broken sleep but anyway I've got still lots to do and we're here to do a stitch along and um, get some more stitches into Holiday Quaker it's by Leela Studios um, for those that are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it along with the thumbs up button because that helps me get seen on YouTube all right so I'm feeling a little bit lost this morning I don't know why it's like I've forgotten something, but I haven't. I've taken Mia to school. I've done what I needed to do, get petrol, all that sort of stuff, all my errands and everything. And now I'm back here stitching. I think because I have no quilts to do. Maybe that's it. My last quilt went out yesterday, people. Ah, how exciting is that? I have no more quilts to do. Um, except for my own. <laughs> I have about 10 of my own to do, but eh, if the mood takes me it takes me if it doesn't it doesn't I don't really care one way or another they can still sit in the box under there they're safe they're sound that's all that matters all right so today we are finishing off this motif up here and then we're going to move down to here and we are going to start on the snowflake again I'm working two pages so I'm on page one and also page two um I was thinking about going over here and doing the Santa's hat, but we'll leave that for the next couple of days because I'll be there before I know it. Um, so yeah, so basically um, we're just going to get some stitches in today. We're going to open up a day three in a little bit of the Silks For You advent. So I'll set that aside. We've got that pulled out and ready to go. Lots of people must be shopping online because there's been lots of delivery trucks and whatnot coming up and down, which you probably just heard one go past then. We've got a little bit of divot in our road. You can't see it when you look at it, but every truck that goes over it, you can hear that there's a divot there and trailers and stuff like that. Ah, oh, yes, I needed that cup of tea. All right, we're working with a blue spruce by Gentle Arts Sampler Threads. Um, one of my favorite colors too, by the way. I like this color. Just saying. All right. So um, I was going to do get to know your needlework uh, tag today, but I'm going to leave that for tomorrow and the day after. So um, we're just going to make it a quick one today, hopefully, and um, depends how much I waffle on and whatnot. Oh, today, when I got to the daycare center, there's a there's a, a little divot um, down the back of the daycare center where they play and um it didn't happen to me it happened to someone else but i got there to drop Mia off and i've gone out and i can hear this little boy like not crying but whinging anyway they're all down the back near the garden and i'm thinking oh what's going on down there there must be something happening down in the garden anyway we've gone to walk down and they started walking up and there's this little boy covered from head to toe in mud he was chasing a butterfly apparently and he hit the puddle that's down the back, slipped over, went A over T, face first into the muddy puddle. So he was covered from head to toe and there was no water pressure. So what they were going to do was they were going to, because he was covered in mud, like you couldn't have walked in through the daycare centre, would have just put water and mud all through their carpets and stuff like that. So they had to um, wash him off outside. Um, cause they, <laughs> and it's red dirt so anybody that lives in King Roy um, has a problem with red dirt because it's all red soil here So and that stuff stains that turns white horses pink um, and looking dirty all the time and that stuff stains so they don't want it to go through onto their um, rugs and stuff like that so 
um, they were getting some water, but there was no water pressure, so they couldn't get any water. They had to go and up go and get a bucket of soapy water and um, soap him up and, and get him all clean before they could take him into the bathrooms. Oh, no. So, and they, I, um, I believe in the baby's room, they have like a, a, a little tub down there um, that has like a, a shower head on it or something. I'm not too sure. But anyway, um, Miss Dye was looking a little bit frantic frantic and <laughs> a little bit <laughs> what do I do um you know and they're all into the end of year cleanup so they've got all the seat all the seats from the um rooms one of the rooms out and they're scrubbing those by hand and and gurneying them and all that sort of stuff so um yeah but there was no water pressure down at the garden and like poor Miss Dye <laughs> And then I've walked out and gone, I can't find Mia's lunchbox. We couldn't find it on Monday when we went and um, it hasn't turned up. So someone must have taken it home by accident. It'll turn back up again. I've never lost anything permanently. Sometimes it gets taken home and then, you know, the kids might only come twice a week or something. So um, they'll bring it back the next time they're in. So, But either way, she's getting a new lunchbox from Santa anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, um, that's getting a big girl, school girl stuff, so. But uh, this kid, like, it was just so, like, I, I tried not so hard not to, like, I actually had to put my hand up over my face because, like, on my mouth because it was hysterical. <laughs> Look on this kid's face, it's like, oh my god, what's happened to me? It was very funny. And I'm all I kept thinking was, oh, thank goodness I'm not here today. <laughs> I'll be seeing you later. Have a good day. Bye bye. But we've had a decent amount of rain. Um, the grass is already starting to green up <clears throat> around town. I've got to get onto my lawnmower guy. To um, and that's not my husband. My husband doesn't do lawns, and he doesn't do gardening. He's a collector of rubbish, is what he is. Um, so yeah. So I've got to get the girls out there in the next couple of days, clear clear up all Mia's toys into a pile, get the lawnmower guy in when it dries out a little bit, he can mow the lawns and then they're done for Christmas then. Well, close enough to it. If I can hold off for another week, that'd be great because then it'll be two weeks. Up. It'll be a week after Christmas he'll come. So yeah, well, but I'll give him a call today, see what happens. Oh, so happy that that quilt went out yesterday, it finally being picked up. I started filming, batch filming yesterday, tutorial, sewing tutorials and whatnot. So um, I've got a, a one that's going to be relevant for all those cross stitches out there as well. So I have to keep an eye out for that. So there's been a lot of preparation and stuff like that. I've set up the filming area now. <clears throat> Um, well I've actually got two filming areas I've got this area, this is where I'm doing my cross stitch and then I've got my cutting mat and I've got my sewing machine set up on the, on the angle um, so we can um, I can just film in the one spot and um, I can always zoom in a little bit if we need to see something close on the um, on the um, sewing machine so but for the most part it went pretty well yesterday I just filmed it I didn't edit it I just filmed it and um, went one too many then um, and got it on the hard drive so that's good and that's sort of what I'm planning on doing is just um, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna buy me some time during the year for when you know the kids get sick and stuff like that I don't have to stress about things not being filmed or anything like that. You know, like when they're sick, I can still edit. It's the filming that's the problem because, you know, they want to be... Well, Mia wants you to sit with her and, and give her cuddles and and rightly so. And, um... Yeah, so this way, if it's already filmed and when she has a sleep, I can just quickly come out and edit it. The other good news is I got MVN now. <laughs> And yesterday, I, you know, I've always been pretty skeptical of it, especially around here. There's been a lot of people that have had a lot of issues and stuff like that. So I've held out for as long as I can to get it. 
So anyway, it got to the point that they've sent me a message going, you know what, it's getting cut off. You're going to have to do something about it. You know, rah, rah, rah. Anyway, I'm on a business plan because I have my business at home and it was cheaper for me to be on a business plan. Um, and it's all calculated at the end of the year, the percentage and all that sort of stuff. But with Telstra, I'm on a business plan, which is good because, you know, you get some extra bonuses like, you know, free pretty much you pay a flat fee you get free phone calls at std which is long distance and local phone calls are free as well and mobiles were capped at two dollars for something i can't remember what it was now but i mostly use my mobile phone for that anyway because i have free calls on that so anyway um they've said you know you're gonna have to do something about it yada 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 and I'm like, okay, fine. I bit the bullet, placed the order. It was supposed to be here on the 3rd of December. It turned up the day before yesterday. Anyway, then it's like, oh, you've got to plug it in and if that's all you have to do. Um, the, the pit's right outside my gate, so it didn't have to come far. So technically, when I spoke to one of the... I had some issues with my um, phone line and I had a repair guy come around and he basically went and had a look at the pit because obviously I've got problems with my phone so he went and had a look at the pit out the front I am the only one that is on my section that comes to like no one's I'm not getting split with next door or the either side of me or across the road or anything like that so basically he said I, I, I should have really good speed when it comes through um, and I'm like sweet cool bonus didn't ask for that just got it just the way it worked out Anyway, um, and I know that it worked out that way because <laughs> when they put it in, next door had their phone on, the other on the left hand side, and the right hand side of the next door neighbour had their phone on, but I didn't. They didn't switch mine back on um, because they must have thought that I was connected with them. So they've gone and asked them if their phone's on. They've gone and asked the left hand side neighbour if their phone's on, but they didn't come and ask me. So I'm waiting for the phone to come on. They told me it was coming on at five o'clock. I didn't have internet all day. Um, couldn't do anything. Couldn't do internet banking or anything. I could on my phone, but that was about it. Couldn't, you know, couldn't do the things that I needed to do um, with editing and all that sort of stuff. So here I am sitting here at six o'clock at night, no phone. Next morning I get up, still no phone. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I go, I get on the blower and they've gone, well, it's all connected. Everybody's got their phone on, rah, rah, rah. They, they all check because they rang, because the, the people were still in the area. So they were able to ring them directly and ask them what was going on. <laughs> anyway, um, I said, well, the, it's not working. I don't have a phone. <laughs> and well, how are you ringing? Said, well, I'm on my mobile phone, obviously. Anyway, um, it was about two hours later, uh, the, a Telstra guy came out because um, he just happened to be in the area and he come out and had a look at it and they hadn't switched me on so basically he switched me back on and then he said um, he was talking to me about the MBN and I said look can I just pick your brain about it and he's like yeah no worries so I um, started picking his brain about it and I was fairly confident that I was going to have fast speed um, and I wasn't sharing it with anybody my sister used to also be a um, tech for them as well so she was she was very confident I was going to have fast speed as well Anyway, when I rang up to, to get the MBN, they were trying to give me like the mid range and I'm like, dude, and it was an Australian guy, so I could go dude. <laughs> and I've just got, I've let him do his spiel and I'm like, dude, this is what I do in a day. This is what I need my internet to do. Okay. I, I don't, I don't want to go halfway and then have to ring you and go, Hey, it needs to be more. And then I have to pay through the wazoo for it. So what you're going to do is you're going to give me the fastest speed that you've got and we're going to go from there. <laughs> he actually says to me, he goes, well, a woman that knows exactly what she wants. I said, yes, and I'm not getting off the phone until I get what I want. So I stayed on the phone. I had a bit of a joke with him. He was over, It was great because he was over in Perth. It wasn't someone that was outside the country that didn't understand um, you know, the issues that we have in this country with different things. Um, especially when it comes to Telstra and all the rest of it. So these were my concerns that I was going to be offline. Well, I can honestly say it was the easiest transition that I have ever done with Telstra. Basically, they didn't lie to me. All I had to do was plug it in and I was right to go. So I have a lead um, 
a, a cord that runs from the back of my computer to the back of the ADSL well it still runs to the back of the modem so my internet out the front was all good because I'm too far <clears throat> away from the modem and there's too many walls between um, you know and uh, doors shut and all the rest of it well that slows down your, your Wi-Fi basically um, and can make it you know very glitchy and all the rest of it so basically um, I'm plugged straight into the the modem and um, straight into the line and for the outside and I filmed yesterday the um, stitch with me and um, I thought you know what I was gonna upload it on my phone as per normal and because um, that's how I've been doing it all these years because uh, it was when I first started doing it um, doing YouTube I used to upload from the computer and it could take anywhere anywhere from eight hours to 16 hours in one case the internet was that bad here because we had wet weather and whatnot um, it actually was nearly 26 hours 27 hours I think it was before it uploaded um, it was so slow and basically I just I just walked away from the computer and didn't worry about it and I thought if it uploads it uploads I don't care if not there's no video going up this week um, and so basically um, that was what I was working with so I started working with my phone because I had 50 gig of data on that and so basically you know I even if I uploaded all my lives and all my videos for the month and I did a video every week of a sewing tutorial plus four lives for the month and you know and anything else I wanted to throw up there um, it was super easy to do that I would never go over my my limit so basically um, yeah I that's what I've been doing so I got MBN now and I thought you know what I'm not even going to use my phone today I'm just going to upload the video I nearly fell off my perch it only took 25 minutes to upload that hour-long video or 55 minute video yesterday and I'm just like oh my god I rang Brendan and I'm like oh my god I, it's like it's so fast and this and the picture on the TV looks clearer too the streaming and um, that Brendan goes does it I'm like well I'm looking at it and it looks clear but he's got bad eyes like he's had cataracts and all the rest of it so um he's his eyesight's not that crash shot so and I'm looking at it going man I'm telling you now that's clear <laughs> it actually looked like 4k and um yeah so basically I had no problem with my ADSL for surfing and streaming and all that even when we were all on it I had no issues with it whatsoever um and basically um yeah I so I wasn't super concerned the only thing I couldn't do was live stream from my computer which I tried yesterday I've done a test one I've got to get a microphone because um, the microphone's not that crush out in this computer um, it still looks a little bit grainy to me but that could just be the webcam because I'm not used to webcams um, whereas I'm used to using my mobile phone so that that's an easy fix I just won't use that webcam when I'll get a D, um, DSLR is that what it is for the cameras and um yeah and I'll just use that as the webcam instead and then I'll get a clearer picture so that's just that I think that that is it it didn't look to be lagging when I use the ADSL there could be up to a 30 second lag um and buffering and all that sort of hoo-ha so now I'm on I just um have to get some more hardware and and um yeah so a camera tripod leads all the all the bells and and not so many of the whistles <laughs> but at least the bells and um, then I will be able to live stream directly from the computer and that will free up my mobile phone because my mobile phone man it gets a working out a working out but I might be able to utilize both where I'll because I can, there is an app that you can use that um, you can turn your mobile phone into a webcam so I might be able to use both um you know have it overhead like this but have the other camera sort of like what Tia's is doing over on down the rabbit hole i'm envious of those people that can do that because i've never been able to do it <laughs> so it's just like yeah you'll just have to hear the voice from beyond from me <laughs> 
so yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so the first run out the first run out it was a good run so we'll see how the run continues although I did notice yesterday when I was using um, Facebook because it's got that backup to the mobile network and I did notice a couple of times on Facebook that it must have just dropped out just for a second because um, Messenger wasn't working and then it clicked back in again so um, and they did say that that would occasionally happen so um, but while I was working with it um, it went really well it made no difference to the um, exporting of the file from my editing software to the computer um, made no difference at all it was around about the same maybe five minutes quicker um, but it was pretty much the same and um, yeah so it made no difference there but the upload was definitely so much better so that is going to now say well not that it really took away my time it was just that it was always there you know like it was sitting there to upload and all the rest of it um, and I had to use my mobile phone which became a little bit problematic because the simple fact was that um, you couldn't use the phone while it was uploading and if you had a slow data day um, it could take a couple of hours to upload like last week it took it took six hours for a video to upload on my mobile data because there was an issue with the mo um, mobile data in Kingaroy so um, the Optus Tower also went down as well so that probably didn't help matters either so um, but I don't need to worry about that now but I've still got my phone as a backup And um, I'm pretty happy with I'm pretty happy with my experience so far, and you know like and I kept everything that I had because I had unlimited, um, unlimited internet, and um, unlimited downloads and uploads and all that sort of stuff. Everything was unlimited, so I managed. I I also um. He went to say something. I went no. I want exactly what I've got now. I am not going backwards. Um, because I've heard of cases where they've gone, oh, you know, you can only get this, but as soon as you go, no, then they keep you where you're at. So, um, yeah, so I said, no, I want exactly what I've got now. Um, unlimited everything. Um, we don't use our home phone to make phone calls, so that's no biggie. Um, and for the most part, I've, I've now got most of my, I've got most of my customers, Except for my um, older ones that don't have mobile phones and stuff, they still like to ring landlines. Because um, I've got quite a few older ladies that come, come and see me and stuff like that to get their quilts done. Um, so yeah, so basically um, everything is working as far as I can tell. Um, and it's super fast. Tia kept saying to me, you won't know yourself. It's so fast. And I'm like, really like my ADSL is pretty fast <laughs> like but I don't think you realize how slow it actually is until you've got something faster I didn't know any difference so I'm like really mm, okay um <laughs> but I I it does click over to like when you change to like from one thing to another it does change pretty quickly so I'm pretty happy with it anyway so, and all I cared about was that I could upload. I don't care about surfing. If it takes, you know, five minutes to get to a page, that's okay. I'll just put some cross stitches in or I'll do some sewing or I'll organize, like, because I'm still slowly going through um, paperwork and stuff like that. I'll pull out a bundle of paperwork and go through that, you know. Um, that that doesn't sort of phase me. Uh, the, the uploads is what phased me because I didn't want to keep using my phone because... I can't well the other day um Brendan was trying to ring me and he ended up sending me a message because I said to him if I'm like when I let when he left I said you need to not ring me on the phone you need to send me a message and then I'll call you from the from the landline or I'll grab one of the girls phones and and give you a call I said because I'm going to be uploading and I seem to not be able to answer my phone I've since done a um, video since that happened and I was able to answer my phone. I think it, what it came down to, I just had to do a phone update. I hadn't done the update. Um, and so sometimes 
not all the time, but sometimes when you've got those updates and they sit there for a while, your phone starts to get a bit glitchy. You do the phone, you do the update, and then it works fine. So, and I like to keep my phone up to date because I use it for a lot of aspects of work and stuff like that. So yeah. All right, this is going to get a nice and quick. So I didn't want to get on here and talk about Telstra today, but anyway, that's the topic of conversation. So what is everybody stitching on? I think we've hit the, around the 25 minute mark. Yeah, so what's everybody stitching on? Hopefully you're getting some stitches in and you're enjoying your time with me. You're taking a moment to go and take a breath and absorb some relaxation and just take a moment for you. A little bit of me time is very, very important. Though my children don't agree with that philosophy. <laughs> but hug wrong to them. Arlo is still being mischievous. Um, Brendan is getting cranky because the cat's in the house. And I said to him, you're just going to deal with it. So he's dealing with that. <laughs> Although she is out during the day. I just put her out before she's out there. She's got a little area that she can play in out the, out the back. And she's getting used to the chickens. The chickens are getting used to her. Snowy's hiding because she's there. I've seen him skulking around up the back. So. He'll be hiding too because it's very wet. It's, it's very wet everywhere. So I'm surprised that he's actually stayed a white cat. Because he lays in the dirt all the time. Alright. We're on to our last little star point. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up day three. So we've got day three of the Silks For You um, 12 day of Christmas. And it's soft and squishy. I'm guessing it's another... Um, again, I can't get into it. You think I would have learnt by now that I need to have something here to open them? <laughs> there we go. Let's have a look. Ooh, it's a little red organza bag this time. Very Christmassy. Ooh. It's not. Ooh, this is something different. This actually falls into what I want to do this year. Silk ribbon. Okay, so there is four meters. That's a beautiful color. It goes really nicely with that um, floss that we got yesterday. So this is 100% silk ribbon, okay, it is 4 millimeters by 4 meters. it's a 12 days pack 2020, uh, you can find more of their products over at silksforyou.net, um, but that is pretty cool. I actually want to learn how to do ribbon embroidery this year, I want to um, expand my knowledge of embroidery, and so um, the two things that I want to learn this year is, well actually there's three, there's white work which I've already bought some patterns from um, Jean Farish for that. I've bought her Lady Catherine and Lady Virginia Garden and there's two others that go with that set. So um, I'm as soon as they're out, I haven't checked her, web, her Etsy store in the last um, couple of weeks. So as soon as they're out, I will um, purchase those and have those there. They are getting started in the beginning of the year. The other one that I wanted to uh, learn is uh, ribbon embroidery. I wanted to go and do a class at the end of last year. Um, no, at the beginning of this year, they had a embroidery thing down in Brisbane and I wanted to go and do the class. The class was just, it was a little bit out of my reach and out of my budget. So um, I want to um, start learning how to do uh, ribbon embroidery and expand on that. And the other one that I want to start doing is cruel work. So cruel work is not exactly on the top of my list. Uh, white work is, I started black work this this year and ribbon embroidery is um, on the top of, of my list so I want to learn how to do that so um, if you've got any um, good videos for me to go and watch just link them up down below or tell me who they are and I'll go find them but that is pretty so I'm thinking like my first um, thing that I want to do is probably just like a, a little um, 
trinket box or something like that and have the flowers and stuff on top um, I want to learn to do that so yeah I have different things each year that I want to um, experiment with and, and give a try and build my knowledge and then hopefully I can come back and teach you how to do it as well so because um, you know some people like my instruction and, and how I explain things so yeah but that is pretty I like that color it looks very Christmassy that is very Christmassy so I'll pop that back in its little pouch and that goes lovely with that oh goes lovely with the um that f uh, floss from yesterday so I might be able to incorporate the two because someone asked me what I was going to do with the floss and I actually don't know what I'm going to do with the floss yet um I'm thinking that I'll probably um it'll maybe a Plum Street sampler or something like that but I may end up just using it for embroidery now that there's that ribbon um yeah that'd be exciting to to be able to incorporate the two so maybe a Christmas design using those colors so yeah so the weather here today is a little bit humid uh, it's very muggy because we've had all that rain we got a massive downpour we're probably about 15 20 mils yesterday afternoon and then it rained a little bit more during the night because so it was still quite wet when I woke up this morning um, although I didn't hear the rain um, and there are a lot of very dark clouds around it does feel like it's going to storm um, the birds are very quiet uh, but I can hear the insects so not all quiet if it goes too quiet then I know something big's coming <laughs> and the chickens are still you know I can hear them under the house and stuff so they're still clucking around and all the rest of it and when I say they're under the house it's because my house is off the ground <laughs> um, and they're hiding from the heat underneath there because in summer I let them out of their chook pen and there's not a lot of shade where they are um, so I let them out to, to roam around and seek shelter from the heat because we get so hot here and they've got access to um, I have bowls of water everywhere for them as well so they've got lots of water around and so yeah I don't have a veggie garden so they don't get in my veggie garden so my husband still hasn't moved the cars You're supposed to have them moved by spring so here's the thing right with my husband he's great he does he, he's he's very handy to have around like car wise I never have to worry about my car um, him and his mate always make sure my car is running smoothly and it never breaks down here's where the greatness falls down yard work he's great at collecting stuff and putting stuff in the yard great at it expert at it can't falter him on it he's terrible of having it organized so it just looks messy okay uh, most people would categorize it as a junkyard because it looks like junk and then he also has cars that he collects and stuff like that so and there's no you know like you know most collectors will have their cars and they'll line them up and they're nice and <laughs> no 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 my husband doesn't do that um so yeah I've and and then you know I ask him to do things and I'll ask him to do thing the same thing and then I'll ask him to do, after the third time I don't ask anymore because then I just sound like a nagging wife and he has accused me of being that and I've said to him, well, maybe if you did it the first time when I asked you, or even the second time or the third time when I asked you, then I wouldn't be still talking to you about it because it'd be done. So, um, <laughs> you, know, you know, when you get short with them, it's a bit like that. And then, um, so I've worked out that he has this pattern. I ask for something. He doesn't do it, falls on deaf ears. Then I ask again and he'll go, yeah, all right. And then I'll ask again. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. And then about three years later, <laughs> he'll get to it. And it has actually been a running joke with a lot of my customers because it took me three years to get my handrail up the stairs. Okay, it took me three years to get my fluorescent lights in from the moment I asked him. It's taken about three years for me to get the renovations done out the front. 
it took about three years <laughs> You know, and this is all different and staggered at different times to get the lights fixed in the lounge room that, that he broke. Um, because he doesn't, he doesn't flick, like, put a switch on. He slaps a switch on. Um, and apparently he's not the only husband that does that. I've, I've had this conversation with a couple of people and they've gone, yeah, my husband does exactly the same thing. What is that? <laughs> and, um, so he slaps the light on. And that's what I said to him. When he put it back in, I'm like, right, so how do we use a light switch? And he goes, you turn it on. I'm like... No, no, no. How does a normal person use their light switch? <laughs> I said, they do this. They use one finger and they switch it on. Gently. We don't slap it. <laughs> so, but like, it's all in jest. Like, it's all in jest. I'm not giving you a hard time. He's busy. Like, it takes a, it just, that's, you know, that's as long as it takes. <laughs> what can I do to get him to move faster? Nothing. He has lots of work to do. Um, and all the rest of it. So I can't exactly begrudge the guy for working hard and, you know, providing for his family. Some things just have to wait. And my vegetable garden is one of them. So, um, he's got, he, but credit where credit's due, he has moved the truck that was parked up there and two cars. There are probably three more cars and a junker to get rid of, um, so hopefully he'll get, I'll, I'll bring it up again in, in the new year and hopefully by next spring I will have it all sorted. And, um, yeah. So I also will not be taking him shopping with me again ever to go and get garden beds or anything like that because everything I wanted he talked me, he, he was trying to talk me out of it. So I just walked out of, the store, out of the store and then he's going, oh I'll just get a forklift and I'll just move the garden beds that you've got because he wants to put a shed where my garden beds are now that I'm not using because he's got stuff all around him. I can't get to him. Um, so he wants to put, because we've got sheds that go up that side. So he just wants to continue the sheds on um, up that side, which is fair enough. That makes that makes perfect sense. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but he goes, oh, I'll just get the forklift and move the, the um, garden beds that we built when we first moved in here. Uh, the thing is, as soon as you touch them, they're going to fall apart. I know that they're going to fall apart. So, um, yeah, I'm not taking him shopping next time when I go to get my um, raised garden beds. I'm just going to go and do it myself. Um, I've got a car now that has a tow bar on it. We have the trailer back here. <laughs> I don't need him. Um, so, basically, I'll, and, you know, we've got Bunnings down there and they've got great customer service they'll help me get it into the um back of the, the trailer and stuff like that so that's the plan i'm just gonna go without him i'll get him to get rid of all the cars um and then i will fence the area off and then um, i'm going for a 15 by 15 meter square garden i'll um fence it off from the chickens and all the rest of it i'm going to have and the reason I'm going 15 by 15 is because I'm going to have their chicken coop at um, one end and then right along the fence line, I'm going to have about a metre off the fence line, I'm going to have a chicken run for them. So they've got a nice area to, you know, dust themselves and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, basically, and as I'm working the garden, I don't have to traipse all the green waste up to one point. I can just hoof it over the fence to them. And... Um, you know, make it a lot easier for myself. So that is the plan. I have it all planned out in my head. Um, I'm going to end up, once I know that he's moved the, um, moved the cars, I can then draw out the, the actual plan itself and go from there. So I've had some feedback about the waste knot. A couple of people have been using it and they're really liking it. So that's been really good. Um, the other question I had was, can you end the tail? So I just did that then. So basically what I did, I ended and I went up the guts, like up the middle. Um, and so I had it here, okay, which is in the middle of the cross. So these crosses here have covered it. And I like to have at least three or four crosses that cover it. Sometimes that's not possible, so you may have to still weave it. Um, but I haven't had any issue uh, for the most part that... Um, it's just, yeah, I just pull it out where I want it to end and go under four stitches. And then um, I put in the 
um, the waist knot in the same hole and then I just cut them from the same hole so yeah it um, works pretty good um, that, and it'd probably work even better if I had like not just four or five stitches to, to cover it so if like in here it would work really well because it'd get covered um, but I definitely do try to go up the middle if I can't go up the middle I don't get too concerned because if I've got two rows meeting they're actually going to um, cover it anyway so um, yeah but I'm really liking because I'm not having to, to flip it over or anything like that I mean it's pretty easy when you just sort of you just pull them out so if you can look I'll move it up so you can see down the bottom here I've got threads hanging out everywhere these all have to be wove in because it was just for the um, for the snowflakes so and I've got one more snowflake down here so I'll basically um, just I'll weave those through because I hadn't started I, I, I sort of did it and then I sort of, sort of didn't so but I'm getting more used to doing it now um, I'm finding it really really good And it's just buried I don't have to flip it over I can just keep going the front looks great I'm not pulling up any threads from because you know when you've got like a tail under there or you haven't snipped it off close enough um, you get like you put put your needle through and sometimes a little bit of fluff comes back from comes up from the floss on the back I have none of that now which is great all right this is the last stitch going in here and then we're going to move down to the um, snowflake I think it's last stitched oh no I've got a couple more stitches so we might actually I might not move down to the snowflake today I might just finish this off and we'll call it a day I'll get this uploaded <clears throat> So I'd just like to uh, thank everybody that's been joining me on the daily Stitchmas. Uh, a lot of people are leaving me comments telling me how much they enjoy it. Um, and I'm so glad that you are enjoying it. It's always nice to have that feedback. I put one too many in there. Oh, what am I going to do there? That's ages ago. I'm going to have to pick that out, that section there out, I think. All right, well, I'll just... Maybe I can get two out and go from there. I just did it again. Just get this out. Just put one too many in. Oh. And I've got a knot under there. Oh, that gives me floss. That knot wasn't coming out. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. Just had a little loop knot in the back there. see what I've done all right what I've done is I've put one too many in this row over here so I've just got to frog out a couple oh, I hate that sound always worried that the floss is gonna break or something like that too busy talking and not watching what I was doing but at least you see, I make mistakes just like everybody else. Alright, that's out. And then I can put those back in. All right, well, this is going to take a little bit longer than I thought because 
Yep, no, that's right. That's it. I only have to pull that one out. I just thought I made another, another mistake, but I haven't. All right, so what my plan is, I've put one too many in here, but I have to pull out all of this to get back to there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'll take out these two rows and re-stitch them again. And then, yeah, so I'll break the thread and I'll unpick it. And then I won't have to undo all that. So, um, and that, and I'll be able to weave that in and all the rest of it over here, I'll be able to weave it in when I've pulled them out. So it won't come apart or anything like that. So that's what I've done there. Didn't even realize that that wasn't supposed to be there. Must've looked at the wrong row. Because that was done yesterday, last night. I don't know when I did that. All right, so I had one too many there. Pop this back in. All right, and now we're cooking with gas. So I'm not quite finished this motif yet. And that's the thing, like you can make simple mistakes like that and it does happen. Especially when you're flapping your gums as much as me. Hopefully you've enjoyed your time here today anyway and um, you can see how it's all going to come together. We now have a plan of attack. I'll fix that up this evening. That won't take me too long. And then tomorrow we will start on the um, last of the snowflakes and down on the motif that's down here. Um, I may even get a bit of a start on that tonight um, and move it along a little bit. Maybe get the snowflakes finished, which will be good. All right, now that's going to look a lot better when I go to do it. All right, so there is a row of stitching that goes along the top here. I'm not actually going to put that in just yet. So what I'll do is, I'll, as I said, I'll take out these two rows, weave in so it doesn't come apart, and basically that will then, I'll be able to continue on with that um, stitching up there and um, finish that off. Just silly mistakes, really. Okay. Just need to have this one in there so I can count off it. So I'll end up making another mistake, no doubt. Alright, so we've got one and there. Pop that one in there, and then we've got four off the other side. And then this puppy is done, except for the frogging that I've got to do. <laughs> Thought it was done. No. And I do like how the little bits of sparkle are coming through it. Like when I walk through the studio and it's sitting here, the light catches it. So I'm assuming it's going to be the same in the frame. It'll, um, it should really sparkle as well. So looking forward to getting it finished and hopefully it'll be done by next Christmas. We all know what I'm like with starts and finishes although I do get some things finished I've worked on a couple of I've been doing the whip whip wranglers and I've worked on quite a few um, this week so and I've got a decent amount some not so many stitches in but others I've got decent amount decent amount in um, and you know and it's, it's quite surprising like you do a little and it just looks like you've gone so far I've got a couple that are pretty big and you know only had a hundred stitches put in them or whatever but still it's progress isn't it all right 
Okay, so I'm going to call it a day. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it, and then that way you won't miss out on any future posts. Don't forget to smash that like button, people. Get me seen on YouTube. And if you want to donate to the um, channel, there is a Buy Me A Coffee link down underneath this video. It would be greatly appreciated. Not necessary, but greatly appreciated at the same time. All right, I will see you all tomorrow for day four um, opening of the silks for you and for some more DD stitches. So I will fix up my little error here and tomorrow we'll be doing some snowflakes. Have a great day, everybody, and happy stitching. Bye for now.